volcanic rocks. Coral reefs only form near the equator, but Hell's Canyon is thousands of miles north of the equator. Geologists were now certain that the rocks of Hell's Canyon were formed in a far-off, exotic location. At that time, the landscape looked much different than it does now. In fact, we think that there were probably chains or chains of islands out in the north, ancient Pacific. We don't even know exactly where they were, but so different than what we see today in Hell's Canyon. And you can probably think about a, a string of islands, maybe 20 or 30 of them, out in the ocean, maybe for several hundred miles, some of which had volcanoes on them. Once in a while, those volcanoes would erupt. And when they erupted, they were powerful. They threw things into the air probably uh, 8, 10, 20 miles. Probably blotted out the sun for a while. They were so explosive. But the debris that we see from those volcanoes are mostly what I've been mapping on, uh, in Hell's Canyon. For the ancient Hell's Canyon Islands to move from the tropics all the way to their present location in Idaho, there must have been profound movements of the Earth's crustal plates. About 130 million years ago, the west coast of North America was located in western Idaho. The volcanic islands of Hell's Canyon were a group of islands offshore of the mainland. A subduction zone existed along the coast. As the ocean plate subducted below the continent, the ancient islands, which were attached to the moving plate, moved closer and closer to the coast. Finally, the islands collided with the continent. When the islands joined uh, the continent, it took a long time. It may have taken 100 million years for the process to occur. It's slow. And if we live, we wouldn't even know it was occurring. And even during the time of the dinosaurs, probably about as long as the dinosaurs lived, is how long it took for these islands to join to North America. Active ever since, bringing in more islands and parts of the seafloor. The west coast of North America grew larger bit by bit. These new pieces of continental crust are called exotic terrain. In Alaska, at the edge of the original continental landmass, sits Mount Denali, North America's highest mountain. To the south and west, all of the land is exotic, added to the continent by subduction. Anchorage is built on the Chugach terrain a beautiful exotic land that was once part of the ocean floor. Farther south along the Canadian coast, a huge island will become a new exotic terrain of North America. Subduction is pushing Vancouver Island closer and closer to the mainland, and eventually they will collide. Vancouver Island might be renamed the Vancouver Peninsula. Scientists now believe that much of Western North America is exotic. In general, most of the land west of the American and Canadian Rocky Mountains is made of exotic continental crust. The Rockies themselves were created when subduction first began millions of years ago. At that time, the continent ended here, and it had a relatively flat coastline. But when the oceanic plate began to dive below the continent, coastal lands were shoved upward to create this majestic range of mountains. Western North America is perhaps the world's best example of a continent pieced together by tectonic forces. Subduction, rifting, and underplating have all played a part in this drama of continental growth.
Plate tectonic forces create the continental crust. But where the crust shows itself at the surface, a different set of forces are active. Sculpting, carving, and even destroying this tectonic handiwork. These are the forces of erosion. The boldest erosional artist is water. It works on the crust in the form of waterfalls, rivers, and rain. One of the Earth's most dramatic water sculpted terrains is found in the southwestern United States. This is Bryce Canyon in southern Utah. It is part of the Colorado Plateau, a great block of the Earth's crust that was arched upward by plate tectonic forces. Water carved this fairyland scene in the soft red rocks of Bryce. In some areas of the Colorado Plateau, running water cuts steep canyons through solid sandstone. Place where marine deposits took place. At Canyon de Chez, geology students get a powerful lesson in the processes of canyon formation. This land here was all horizontal and flat. There are streams running through it, and there was this Colorado uplift of the Colorado Plateau. And when this uplift was happening, the streams are still running through, creating this Canyon de Chez. So the canyons are still here today. And this took quite um, a long time, millions of years. As students explore the geology of Canyon de Chez, they discover something unusual in the cliffs above. Centuries ago, Native American people built their dwellings in the nooks of sandstone cliffs. Arched caves are carved out by the combined forces of surface water and groundwater. The grandparent of all canyons is the Grand Canyon in Arizona. It is almost too much to believe that this mild, deep spectacle was sculpted by water. But in geologic time, the years are many, and the Colorado River has worked without rest through the ages. Water freezes to ice, another powerful erosive force is created. Glaciers sculpt the Earth's surface with a stronger hand than flowing water. <laughs> 